Well, at the weekend, my wife Wendy and I were having lunch at Sydney's wonderful Barangaroo precinct. A few tables away from us, we heard a loud popping sound followed by the cheers of assembled family and friends. A gender reveal party was happening and the happy couple had just announced the gender of their unborn baby. Now, the cognitive dissonance of our society is to the fore at such events. Uh, number one, our abortion to birth laws in every state deny the humanity of the unborn babies we recognise at gender reveal parties. Two, dominant LGBTIQA plus political ideology, which is enforced by so-called gender identity laws, mean that couples announcing their unborn baby's gender really are dangerous bigots because that ideology says that gender should not be assigned at birth, let alone before birth, and it's up to the child to choose their gender whenever the child thinks that they're ready to know whatever gender they think they might be. Now, in this crazy mixed up world, it's why we call this segment every week with Binary's Kiralee Smith Gender Reveal. Kiralee, uh, the fact that gender reveal parties are so popular these days must do the heads in of the LGBTIQA plus political activists. Absolutely. And the fact that, you know, every time someone has a baby, the first question is, is it a boy or a girl, if they don't already know the gender. So, you know, it, it's a really important um, fact to all of us because there is only two options. There's only male or female. Yes, there are males who have um, sexual disorders, but that just means they're males with female sex characteristics and vice versa. Mm. But it's really important to us as human beings and uh, we do value and treat both sexes Um Equally, well, most parents do anyway. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, it's something that I think the, those activists, they know full well that uh, what they're standing for is not reality, yep. it's not biological, it's not scientific evidence-based. And uh, so I hope that uh, many parents continue to celebrate the fact that they're only having a boy or a girl for many, many <laughs> years to come. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, the Australian culture is at war with these political activists, or these political activists are at war with mainstream Australians, and I think people are going to wake up more and more. Uh, speaking of cognitive dissonance, Kiralee, um, the Albanese government has announced that all sporting organisations must have a 50-50 representation of males and females in leadership positions by 2027. Now, Kiralee, I have to ask this, does this include men identifying as women? Absolutely, because, you know, they can't even define what a woman is and we already know that their sports policies from the Australian Institute of Sport, the guidelines and every major sporting institution in Australia accepts that women can have a penis and that uh, men can bring their own balls to women's sport if they, if you like. So um, <laughs> they absolutely will <laughs> include, sorry for that. Yeah, you've got me <laughs> there, Kiralee. Absolutely... You weren't just referring to, to their <laughs> soccer balls, were you? Um, but, you know, like you have to laugh because it is such a serious matter. We've seen the issue with the flying bats where five males absolutely annihilated the women's competition, uh, left those women humiliated and devastated. And now the Albanese government, um, you know, it's just insane that they can't define the word woman, yet they're um, virtue signalling saying that we're going to have 50-50 representation at uh, the board level. Well, I, I think that they are... Uh, uh, gaslighting women. I think yeah. that they're slapping women in the face and that they are revealing um, that they're in this for politics, not for the actual protection and promotion of women in sport. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely right. Um, it's interesting, Kiralee, this week I think Tanya Plibersek was celebrating 30 years of affirmative action uh, to try and help elevate women, but again, um, she can't even define what a woman is. Um, Kiralee... Um, and sports, sorry. Yeah, go for it. I was it. just going to say Sports Minister Annika Wells, mm. you know, she's boasting of, you know, $200 million spent here on women's sport and $36 million spent here and she says that women's voices should represent women and yet when we've asked her to define women, when we've asked her to step in and intervene and protect women's sport, there's cricket. So, you know, she's a great hypocrite in this area and have no respect for her as a sports uh, minister or um, a woman. Yep, and we should have no respect for politicians who don't understand the basics. Kiralee, um, a disturbing new film uh, called Behind the Looking Glass has documented the torment and grief that women suffer uh, when they're married to men who want to identify as women. We know what's behind this. We know what these men are like. We know what drives them. That's why so many don't want us hurt. 
You hear about the women who stay. Some of them will now say that they're lesbians. The story of women that leave is hardly covered at all. Carolee, tell us about this film and the women that it gives voice to and why the LGBTIQA plus political movement does not want these women's stories out there. Oh, look, these are devastating accounts by about 16 women whose husbands, um, you know, are clearly autogynophiles who are sexually aroused at the thought of being a woman and dominating women. And uh, many of these women describe the domestic violence situations that they've found themselves in. Um, but, yeah, that there's no one who wants to hear their voices because they are lifting the lid. They are exposing the horrific, violent, aggressive, sexual nature of these men who are identified identifying as women and these families are left utterly devastated uh, in this situation and it, it's a harrowing watch it's um really disturbing but it, it it is full of facts full of insight of what happens to families when these men do that and I will say Lyle that we have an account similar in our book that's coming out in the uh, next few months of uh, a, a bra very brave woman who describes her experience uh, with her husband who transitioned or you know identifies as a female and it, it is utterly heartbreaking these women are already vulnerable they're disenfranchised and uh, when this happens to them it really um, pushes them down in society nobody wants to hear what they have to say because the reality of it is really devastating yeah these personal stories and and the ones that you're about to document as well in your upcoming book uh, must be the uh, worst nightmare of the activists at Equality Australia, Anna Brown, and these people that continue to push this rainbow ideology on us. Kiralee, um, speaking of, of uh, the damage this ideology is doing, Jasmine Sussex, we mentioned her earlier in the show, has been taken to the Queensland Human Rights Commission for saying that men can't breastfeed. How stupid are our politicians for allowing this and for allowing a fellow Australian to be subject to such legal action? This is insane and it's infuriating. And as Jasmine herself has um, posted, you know, if you've got a problem with it, take it up with Mother Nature. You and I would say take it up with God. This is human design. Only women can breastfeed. Only women can produce the milk um, that, you know, it even changes from day to night. It changes with um, the immune system of the baby. It is incredibly an intelligent design, Lyle. Breastfeeding is just mind-blowing the more research they do on it. And these men who think that they're breastfeeding are just having a chemical um, drug cocktail that is not um, suited or, you know, intricately designed for the best needs of the baby. They're doing it to satisfy their own needs and they're not doing it for the best interests of their child. And it's really offensive, it's really stupid, and that the courts are even entertaining this is beyond comprehension. It sure is, Kiralee, and I think next time you have a look at the rainbow political flag, you've got to think about the harm that, and the trashing of motherhood that it does and the harm that it does to babies. Um, this is a shocking political movement and the sooner we wake up, the better. 